The tongue twister, She Sells Seashells on the Seashore, is often accredited to the amateur fossil hunter Mary Anning. Anning, despite technically being an amateur hunter, was one of the most influential fossil hunters of her day and helped the advancement of paleontology immensely. One of Anning's key discoveries, and certainly her most famous one, was the discovery of Ichthyosaurus in 1811. This strange new creature was given its name, meaning fish lizard, years later in 1817. However, despite the name, Ichthyosaurus was neither fish nor lizard, instead being a type of sea-dwelling reptile that is completely different to anything we're familiar with today. In fact, the fossil was later the namesake for an entire order of animals, the ichthyosaurs. But where did the ichthyosaurs come from? How long did they live and what happened to them? Well, for that answer, we're going to have to travel back in time to the very beginning. Well, not the very beginning, the beginning of the ichthyosaurs, as far as we know. The earliest ichthyosaur-like fossils we've found so far are present in the early Triassic rocks. Meet Catarhynchus, this little guy. Discovered in China, Catarhynchus was only around 20 inches long, or around 50 centimeters. It wasn't quite an ichthyosaur yet, but it had been speculated that it may have been some sort of proto-ichthyosaur, or if not that, at least shared a common ancestor with the order. The animal had many ichthyosaur-like features, such as a flat tail with which it could propel itself through the water, and paddle-like limbs for ocean maneuvering. However, unlike its later cousins, who were waterlocked, this animal could probably climb out of the water like a seal, in order to mate, give birth, etc. It seemed a transitional species, between the landlubber reptiles and the oceanic ichthyosaurs, and even had bones specialized in buoyancy to help it swim without expending too much effort. But this was just the beginning. Later, true ichthyosaurs began to pop up and, before long, the late Triassic period began to be a golden age for the ichthyosaurs, as it was during this time period that they started to become bigger and more numerous than they would ever become again. They ruled their Triassic seas as some of the only reptiles that we know of that lived exclusively in the water and didn't need to come up to land and could navigate the deep ocean waters. While these animals weren't yet as specialized and streamlined as their later Jurassic cousins, they were no less weird and surprising. For instance, meet Shastasaurus. At 69 feet, or around 21 meters in length, this genus was one of the biggest marine reptiles of all time, and definitely the biggest of the ichthyosaurs. The largest species was S. sicaniensis, and it was bigger even than the popular Liopleurodon, a creature whose size is often greatly exaggerated. Thanks, walking with dinosaurs. Unlike a lot of the ichthyosaurs, Shastasaurus was a toothless animal, and probably relied on its jaw strength and sharp beak to crush its prey, which would consist of fish, squid, smaller reptiles, and any other animals that could fit inside its large mouth. In fact, its jaws were so strong that there are theories it could open its mouth so quickly it would create a sort of suction vacuum inside the mouth, sucking in small prey items. Despite its size, this creature was relatively streamlined and torpedo-like, a feature that would come to define the ichthyosaurs in later times. Speaking of later times, let's jump forward a period, into the Jurassic. At this time, dinosaurs and reptiles were firmly seated as the world's most abundant creature, ruling the skies, land, and seas, and the ichthyosaurs were no exception. Now these animals began to perfect their body shapes. No more were the thick, gigantic bodies of the Triassic animals. These ones were smaller, with bigger fins, tails, and flippers, and really began to grow into the whole fish look. Now that's what I call a glow-up. Case in point, Stenopterygius. This medium-sized ichthyosaur was an incredibly fast swimmer, a deep-sea hunter with a streamlined body, perfect for maneuvering through the seas, hunting elusive squid and fish. Stenopterygius is also a very unique find in that one of the fossil specimens shows a mother that was killed off and fossilized right in the act of giving birth. This type of specimen is very rare and incredibly insightful, as it shows that ichthyosaurs were viviparous animals, that means they gave live birth, instead of laying eggs. This is rare for reptiles. We also know that they gave birth tail first. However, as we all know, all good things must come to an end eventually. 
The mid to late Jurassic period gave rise to more of the sea-dwelling reptiles, animals such as plesiosaurs and even ocean crocodiles. Some of these animals were better hunters than the ichthyosaurs, being faster or more maneuverable, and began to take over the ichthyosaur hunting grounds and ecological niches. This competition helped to dwindle the ichthyosaur population, a population that was at an all-time low by the end of the Jurassic. It didn't look so good for our little heroes, who weren't seeming to do so well. That is, except for one family in particular. These are the ophthalmosaurs. Making their debut in the Middle Jurassic, these new family of ichthyosaurs took the whole fish look to an extreme. Muscular, robust, these were noticeable for their large, round eyes. In fact, the name ophthalmosaur means eye reptile. These animals thrived in the early Cretaceous, with one genus, Plodipterygius, being found on almost every continent in the world. Of course, this wasn't enough to save them, and the ichthyosaurs died out before the Cretaceous even ended, before the tragedy that struck the dinosaurs. So why did such a seemingly successful group go extinct seemingly out of nowhere? Well, numerous explanations have been put out there, but it was probably simply due to their slowness to evolve. The climate was changing mid-Cretaceous, and these animals had more and more competition. It seems they just couldn't keep up with the rapidly changing world, and went extinct because of it. But don't be too sad. Ichthyosaurs as a whole lived almost as long as the dinosaurs, with a lifespan ranging around 168 million years from the first ichthyosaur to the last. The story of the ichthyosaur is one of success and ocean dominance for hundreds of millions of years. Well, 168 to be specific, but that doesn't sound as cool. Well, I do hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, consider subscribing to keep up with what I put out, and like this video if you think I've earned it. And be sure to share this video with your friends to make them think you're smart. As always, I've been Luke, and thanks for watching Paleontology Plus.